Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear students, we are going to talk about intervertebral disc prolapse. Intervertebral disc is an hydrostatic load-bearing structure between vertebral bodies for C2 to C3 to L5 to S1. Nucleus and consists of two parts: nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosus. It is relatively avascular and L4-5 is the largest avascular structure in the body. This is a skeletal picture to show this. And this is annulus fibrosus and this is a nucleus pulposus. So vital functions of intervertebral disc are restricted intervertebral joint motion, contribution to stability, resistance to axial rotational and bending load and preserve, preservation of anatomical relationship. A spinal disc herniation is a medical condition affecting the spine in which a tear in the outer fibrous ring, the annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc allows the soft central portion nucleus pulposus to bulge out beyond the damaged outer ring. So types of herniation are posterolateral disc herniation. Here the protrusion occurs posterolaterally into the vertebral canal compressing the roots of a spinal nerve. A protruded disc usually compresses the next lower nerve so that nerve crosses the level of disc in its path to its foramen. For example, protrusion of fifth lumbar disc usually affects the S1 instead. Number two, central or posterior herniation is less frequent. A, here a protruded disc above the second lumbar vertebra may compress spinal cord itself or may result in quadra equina syndrome. Three is a lateral disc herniation. Here this may compress the nerve root above the level of herniation. L5, uh, sorry, L4 nerve root is most common in the world and patient typically have intense radicular pain. So classifications of herniations are degeneration, loss of fluid in nucleus pulposus, protrusion, number two, there is a bulge in the disc but not a complete rupture, number three, prolapse, nucleus forced into outermost layer of annulus fibrosus, not a complete rupture, number four, extrusion, a small hole in annulus fibrosis and fluid moves into the epidural space. And number five is sequestration, disc fragments start to form outside the disc area. This is the schematic uh, illustration. A is normal, P is bulging disc, C is focal bulge or protrusion number d d is prolapse or extrusion and number 5 is sequestration or free segment so this is picture showing a normal disc above a degenerated disc below further below a bulging disc further below a herniated disc you can see it, it has gone beyond uh, into the posterior and thinning of the disc and disc the degeneration with osteophyte formation causes repeated mechanical activities like bending twisting lifting and other activities without break and proper stretching can leave the discs damaged living a sedentary lifestyle individuals rarely if ever engage in physical activity are prone to unaided discs because the muscles that support the back and neck weaken which increases strain on the spine and number three is from traumatic injury to lumbar discs commonly occurs when lifting while bent at the waist rather than lifting with legs with the while the back is straight causes are obesity practicing poor posture and tobacco abuse 
so this is a normal disc on your left and on the right you got the herniated disc compressing the nerve root the symptoms are varying on the depending on the location of the herniation and the type of soft tissue that come becomes involved herniated discs are not diagnosed immediately as the patient come with undefined pains in the legs in the thighs knees or feet and these are the presentation of the compression of nerves at various levels majority of spinal disc herniation occurs in the lumbar region 95% at l4 5 and l5 s1 and the second most common site is the cervical region c5 6 or c6 7 the thoracic region accounts for only 0.15% to 4% the diagnosis is based on history symptoms and physical examination lumbar axial lumbar lumbar sacral spine normal shoulder narrow discs loss of lumbar lordosis of compensatory scoliosis and a ct scan might show shape and size of spinal canal its contents and the structure around it including soft tissues and or the bulging out disc or mri lumbar spine <coughs> may show intervertebral disc protrusion or a compression of the nerve root so a narrow space between l5 and s1 indicating probable prolapsed intervertebral disc see this is l5 s1 this is a mri showing the disc prolapse so complications can be border acquana syndrome chronic pain permanent nerve injury or paralysis treatment options are pain medication bed rest borosteroids nerve root blocks in surgery and <coughs> ansets for example aspirin ibuprofen oral steroids their prednisolone or methylprednisolone and benzodiazepine a low dose for an epidural injection physical therapy includes modalities to temporarily relieve pain for example traction electrical stimulation massage and patient education on proper body mechanics weight control tobacco cessation and lumbar sacral support this is what the support is in surgery is only considered to be as the last resort or if a patient has a significant neurological deficit the presence of cardiac venous syndrome is considered a medical emergency requiring immediate attention and possible surgical intervention so the indications for surgery are persistent pain in in signs of sciatic tension after 2 to 3 weeks of conservative treatment a cardiac venous syndrome this is an emergency and a neurological deterioration while under conservative management so intradiscal electrothermic therapy is a fairly advanced procedure in which an electrothermal catheter is inserted in the intervertebral disc it heats the posterior annulus of the disc causing contraction of the collagen fibers and uh, it is a minimally invasive output surgical outpatient surgical procedure developed over the last few years to treat, treat patients with low chronic back pain that is caused by tears or small herniations of their lumbar disc and this is a idet picture nucleoplasty is also a most advanced form of percutaneous discectomy developed to date tissue removal from the nucleus acts to do compress the disc and relieve the pressure pressure exerted by the disc on the nearby roots <coughs> so discectomy or micro discectomy is a procedure to remove part of an intervertebral disc that is compressing the nerve root or a nerve spinal cord and chemo nucleolysis is a term used to denote chemical destruction of the nucleus pulposus chemo nucleolysis and this involves intradiscal injection of chymopain which causes hydrolysis of cementing protein of the nucleus pulposus and also causes decrease in water binding capacity leading to reduction in size and drying of the disc and laminectomy 
removes the lamina to relieve the spinal stenosis of nerve compression. So this is what is this is cervical laminectomy and this is a fusion cage and pedicle screws are fixation sometimes uh, the result of laminectomy uh, fusion surgery is done to keep two or more bones to be together into one solid bone and fusion cages are new devices essentially hollow screws filled with bone grafts that help the bones of the spine heal together firmly number fusion is the only only indicated for recurrent lumbar disc herniations and not for a primary herniation. Disc orthoplasty, uh, artificial disc replacement ADR or total disc replacement TDR is a type of orthoplasty. The surgical procedure in which a degenerated intervertebral disc in the spinal cord are placed by a artificial devices in the lower lumbar or cervical upper spine used for cases of cervical disherniation. Usually a fiber is placed there and nursing management determines the onset location, radiation of pain, paresthesia, limited movement, diminished function of the neck, shoulders and upper extremities and also provides explanation to support surgery, reassurance that surgery will not weaken the back and also pre-operative assessment also includes an evaluation of the movement of extremities as well as bladder and bowel function and to facilitate the post-operative turning procedures the patient is taught to turn as a unit called log rolling and encouraged to take deep breaths and cough this is part of pre-operative uh, care and counseling and uh, also includes um, post-op care which includes IV, morphine and vital signs and sensations to be checked and assess for uh, CSF functions, assess for paralytic alias and assess for urinary retention and these are the nursing procedures uh, and uh,